sick of people on ESPN or SportsCenter who think they have their heads on their shoulders but really don't? Well, it's time for the Jimmy the K Sports Show. We are going to give you the most urgent sports news. Now it's time for the Jimmy the K Sports Show. We are live, unedited, and giving it to you now. Here we go, boys. Saturday night, and it's time for the sports show talk now. How you doing out there, guys and girls and anyone that in the sports world that just happens to drop by and say hello? It's me, your host, Jimmy the K, as usual. I want to apologize for the lack of shows the last couple of weeks. And then with the winter meetings coming up, I was going to do a show each and every day of the winter meetings. But the truth of the matter is so much crap came through the doors at once that woo, baseball world just had people change hands faster than you could say scat. Wow. So we're going to go through some of the, uh, the, the trades, some of the signings, et cetera, et cetera. We're going to go through a lot of stuff in a short amount of time. So put your ball caps on, put your hats on, boys and girls. Fasten your seatbelts because I'm about, re- to, I'm about ready to take you on a ride that you have never been on before. A ride in which you're going to be going, holy crap, Devin! And singing songs like, we wish you a Merry Christmas. Sorry, I just had to do that. <laughs> Give you 10 seconds to get your ugly yellow nugget keys off my property before I pump your guts full of lead. One, two, ten. Oh, we got so much stuff that we got to keep going and keep going and keep going and keep going like the Energizer Bunny. What's the biggest news of the winter meetings? I'll tell you what the biggest news of the winter meetings was, was the fact that John Lester signed with the Chicago Cubs. The Chicago Cubs, the Chicago White Sox have both looked to um, prove that they are out and about and ready to win, and they mean business. Andrew Friedman, the new general manager there, is is um, showing guys that you know he's out and he's going to do <coughs> what he can to put W's on the board and get a championship back to the Chicago area. Granted, they still got the curse. The curse. You remember the curse, boys and girls? You remember the curse? Do you? Good. Good, good. It's a curse. The Chicago Cubs curse. You're not going to win anything. You're not going to win anything because I say you're not going to win anything. Actually, they're going to actually have a pretty top-notch team. You know, they're not going to be the best team out there, but they're not going to be the worst team on the block either. When you think about it, John Lester now now involved with with some of the uh, other guys, young guys trying to teach them how to, how to pitch and how to win championships. How to get to a championship caliber team. He's going to have Miguel Miguel Montero, who was traded from the Arizona Diamondbacks to the uh, Chicago Cubs. Pretty good deal by the Cubs there. Traded for Miguel Montero. That's going to be pretty good. They're talking to David Ross. uh, I believe it's David Ross, who was his everyday catcher in Boston. Possibly about signing with the Chicago Cubs, making something happen in that type of aspect and making them a little bit better and having his everyday catcher with him. What other sports news do we know? We know that Yang Wong Jong, a North Korean pitcher, had the Rangers as the highest bidder, but the team from Japan has said, no dice, no dice. You're not going to the MLB. Sorry. My friend Yang Wong Jong, hopefully I'm pronouncing that right. I know I got a, a couple of viewers o- overseas. Um, if, if I'm not pronouncing that right, help me out here. Help me out. It's it's Yang Huion Jong. I'm white. I couldn't speak Japanese for the life of me. But hey, I tried, right? Right, guys? I tried. Maybe I shouldn't try, right? 
Oh, maybe I should have laid off the eggnog at the uh, Dirty Santa party tonight, shouldn't have I? <laughs> oh, lay off the eggnog, white boy, lay off the eggnog. Oh. Some days I just wonder about myself. And some days I'm pretty sure y'all wonder who I am. Johnny Manziel, Johnny Manziel, guess what? He's in the news again. What's new? Johnny Manziel. He's always in the spotlight. Hi, I'm Johnny Manziel. Oh, I'm going to go to Dirty, dirty Santa party. I'm going to have a couple beers. I'm going to get drunk. I'm going to go hit a girl. I'm going to go hit a guy. I'm going to go hit a good guy. And then I'm going to knock up a girl and deny it because I'm Johnny Manziel. Sorry, I should have laid off the eggnog, right? Well, guess what, boys and girls? Johnny Manziel's at his old crap again. What's new? Him and Kobe Bryant should just jump in bed together. You know, it, uh, I, I'm not gonna, I'm, I'm not gonna mince words here. Uh, I'm not gonna mince words. They should just jump in bed together and get it over with. They're both party boys. They're both egotistical maniacs with their thumbs up the butts that don't know crap from a hole in the ground. Yes, I said all that in once. If you don't like it, too bad. This is my show. I do what I say. I, I say what I do and do what I say, all right? If you want to cancel me, so be it. But you can't cancel me. <laughs> they should have laid off the eggnog, right? Menzel and his entourage were involved in a hotel fight. What's new? You know what's funny, though? You know what's funny? And I think there's a reason for this. That next Sunday after him and his entourage were in fight, er, er, involved in a fight at a hotel, he was starting that Sunday. He was starting for the Cleveland Browns. Now, do I know why he was starting? I have my theory. My theory is that they started Johnny Manziel because Hoyer's a pretty darn good quarterback, but guess what? You want to know something? If we want somebody as a top-notch quarterback, somebody that would bring fame to our name, Johnny Football, Johnny Football, am I doing that right, pretty boy? Am I doing that right, Johnny Manziel? Am I doing that right, pretty boy? Yeah. Yeah, pretty boy. Am I doing that right? Or maybe I should be doing that right. Right? Maybe. Maybe not. I don't know. Maybe I shouldn't. Maybe I should. Maybe I shouldn't. Maybe I should. Maybe I should have laid off the eggnog. Oh. Dirty Santa parties are really bad for people like me. Especially who have a show right after. Are you kidding me? They should they should adhere to my instructions and have this show. That they should understand that my show comes first and that their dirty Santa comes last. And they should just have the dirty Santa after my show. What do you say, guys? What do you say? Like this Facebook page all about Sports Zone if you think I'm right. Hey, why not? Hey, who am I? To say, I don't like dirty Santas, <laughs> but I love the eggnog. No, but my theory is that Johnny Menzel, Mr. Pretty Boy, hey, money, money, money. Uh, the theme song of, of Donald Trump's uh, uh, Apprentice song comes into my head. Is they want to start Johnny Menzel as much as they can because the truth of the matter is they don't want Hoyer as quarterback. They want the pretty boy, Mr. Mr. Prima Donna, Johnny Manziel is their quarterback. Again, I'm not going to mince words here. I have said all along that if Johnny Manziel wins a championship with the Cleveland Browns, I will shut that. I, I will pipe down. I will shut up. But my, the truth of the matter is, as long as he's acting like a jackass, and excuse my language, but the truth of the matter is, he is acting like a jackass, a donkey. For those of you all that don't understand what that means, he's acting like a donkey. Before somebody comes on and says, you can't say that. I'm a donkey, all right? He's acting like a jackass, all right? Before he's going to act like a donkey, a jackass, or whatever you want to call him, maybe he should pipe down and let his football numbers do the talking. But instead, he's going to act like a fool on and off the field. And he's going to give the Cleveland Browns a bad name. A bad name. 
hey, maybe he should just, like I said at the beginning of the segment, maybe he should just jump in bed with Kobe Bryant. They could be bed buddies for all I care. All right? Johnny Manziel, Kobe Bryant, bed buddies. You heard it live here on the Jimmy the K Sports Show. What other sports news are you? Oh, man. I already told you about John Lester signing with the Giants. Well, he's signing with the uh, Cubs, you ding a -ling. The good news that's happened in the last couple weeks is that Oklahoma City Thunder have finally got fully healthy. They're playing with their top 15 guys. Kevin Durant, Russell Westbrook are on the floor, uh, on the floor with Ibaka, Stephen Adams, uh, Kendrick Perkins, Lamb, Reggie Jackson, the big boys like that, who are continually giving them a pretty happy name, a good name, a name that they wouldn't have had had they been hurt the whole season. <laughs> you know, I'm a Thunder fan. I'm not going to lie to you. So, I'm going to say this, and you're going to hear this first and only on the Jimmy the K Sports Show, that I personally believe if the Thunder wind up as the eighth seed in the NBA playoffs, guess what? They're going to be the toughest eighth seed ever in the NBA. Ever. Ever. Mark my words, the toughest, the toughest eight seed in the NBA. With that being said, what have they done the last two weeks? They've won the last two weeks. They haven't had a lot of losses. They did have a couple bad losses when, when Durant was, was just finally uh, back on the floor and kind of getting his groove back. But since then, they've stepped it up. They're starting to play like the Oklahoma City Thunder of old. The healthy Oklahoma City Thunder. So with that, again, mark my words, they will be the toughest A seed in the NBA ever. Well, speaking of Oklahoma City news, so much good stuff has helped, happened in the state of Oklahoma. I had the privilege... about a week and a half ago to go to the unveiling of something new at a ballpark in the Oklahoma City Thunder. <laughs> in the, <coughs> the Oklahoma City metro area. Granted, the name's still going to be the Chickasha Ballpark or whatever, Chickasha, Chicken, whatever you want to call it. The Shake Your Booty Shawl, I don't know what, what it's called. But the unveiling is that the Los Angeles Dodgers have officially bought the organization. They will not be the Oklahoma City Red Hawks anymore. If you have Oklahoma City Red Hawks gear, get rid of it. They're going to laugh at you when you ask them to sign it. Because they're no more. The Dodgers have bought out that company. Now we have the Oklahoma City Dodgers. I have the privilege of uh, touring the, uh, the team store that day and, and getting a, a couple of pictures here and there. I got a, a couple of pictures, one of being a top, uh, one of their top players in the minor leagues for AAA Dodgers. He was walking around the, the area. I got a picture of him. Speaking with media, I got a picture of a former Texas Ranger, now the farm director of the Los Angeles Dodgers, Gabe Kapler, and got to personally speak to him. You know, I, I personally told him, hey, what's up, Gabe Kapler? He's like, hey, what's up, brother? You know, his spray-on tan crap. Dude's real friendly. I'm not going to lie. He's top-notch. For somebody that makes millions of dollars, who spent a little bit of time on Fox Sports 1 sports show and and knows a little bit about baseball. He's top notch. He's real top notch. So with that being said, if you're in Oklahoma City, 
you like the Red Hawks, don't bring that gear to the ballpark anymore. They're not going to sign it. Those players ain't here anymore. It's the Dodgers organization. You now I'll see Oklahoma City Dodgers gear here. You'll probably, once once the, the Triple S season starts, you'll probably see Los Angeles Dodgers stuff here. A lot of people don't believe that... The Dodgers are going to have a big showing here in the city. I personally disagree. I've spoke with several people who feel like the Dodgers will have a large showing. Larger showing than what the Astros did in the two or three seasons that they, here, that they were here. And Houston's only nine hours away. You look at California. A lot of people are like, well, Los Angeles is on the other side of the world. The other side of the world. We're in the middle of the freaking country, people. How is it on the other side of the world? All right? There's a left, center, and a right. All right? We're in the center. Los Angeles is in the left. How are they on the other side of the world? Now, if you're saying Russia is on the other side of the world, I understand. But Los Angeles is not on the other side of the world. It's a couple states over, two or three states over. Yeah, they'll have to fly their players in. They have to fly their players out. Big whoop. They make the money. Who cares? But they're going to have a showing and a larger showing than what the Houston Astros did. And they were only nine hours away to our south. All right. The Los Angeles Dodgers organization, AAA club, in my God honest opinion, is going to bring in better revenue than quite possibly the Rangers Red Hawks organization did. And that's saying a lot. The Rangers brought a lot of top players through their AAA club here in Oklahoma City before they went big league to make it big. Ian Kinsler come through here, through Oklahoma City. Nelson Cruz came through Oklahoma City. Guys like that came through Oklahoma City before they became top notch. So, for what I'm saying, I'm saying Oklahoma City's going to have Probably a better showing, in my God honest opinion, well, I know for a fact, than the Houston Astros organization. But personally, I think they might actually have a better showing than the Texas Rangers organization. And again, I'm a Texas Rangers fan. But I will not bring that bias to this show. Because the truth of the matter is, the truth is the truth. And I think the Dodgers fans are going to come out in full force to Oklahoma City. And they're going to watch their guys put on those Oklahoma City Dodgers uniforms and perform the way Dodgers players are supposed to perform, and that's in a winning caliber baseball team. That's that. Big news for Ranger fans. While we're at it, the Texas Rangers finally inked, inked, signed, for those of y'all that don't understand that term, they signed Kobe Lewis, to a one-year contract. The one-year contract is barring incentives. What that means is they're probably incentive laden, meaning that you have to pitch so many innings and we'll add on so many thousand. You have to hit so many strikeouts, we'll add on so many thousand. You have to not be on the DL for five times or more. Otherwise, we won't add on so many thousand. Is this a good deal? Yes. Because basically what this says is what I've said all along on the show and past shows. And believe it or not, if you're trying to find us through Ustream anymore, because I'm on a basic channel and I'm not paying them for their services, my apologies, but I don't make enough money on this because y'all people ain't paying me anything. But... If you go to the YouTube channel, you search all about or, or search the Jimmy the K Sports Show, you'll find us on YouTube. You'll find all the old past videos of this. And you can listen to all the other segments from months past. They're not going to black us out after 30 days or more. Uh, Ustream, because I'm on a basic channel, they're going to black us out after 30 days. Basically, what that means for those of the those of y'all that don't understand is my videos will be up for 30 days after that 30 day mark they take them down you search for us now you're only going to see two videos well you'll see three once this one is up 
But after that 30 day mark, you'll see two. Then you'll see three. But if you go to our YouTube page, the Jimmy the K Sports Zone, those will be up for your liking at any particular time. How do you find that? If you're going through Ustream and you're clicking on the other, the Ustream, uh, the logos or whatever, and you see the Ustream deal at the bottom, you can click that Ustream deal, and it's going to come up to Jimmy the K Sports Show. You can type that into your search engine at the YouTube page. It's going to pop me right up. My nice, sexy beard. Girls, you know you think it's hot. Right, ladies? You know the beard's hot. I'm working on my Doug Dynasty style, right? All right? Girls, you think it's sexy, right? I'm sexy and I know it. That, that should be one of my songs. I, I think that's going to be my outro song tonight. I'm sexy and I know it, right? Okay, okay. I'll shut up now. But that's what that means. So... Basically, just for y'all that are looking and y'all go, hey, he's only put up two videos or three videos uh, on the basic setting. So if you want to find more, go to your YouTube page. It's a lot easier that way. But Kobe Lewis signing a one-year deal, probably incentive laden. Is it a good deal? Definitely. Why is it a good deal? Because, well, like I've said in past shows, it's basically guaranteeing that he will retire a Texas Ranger. Good deal on the Texas Rangers part. Very good deal. <laughs> I'm going through a plethora of new stories. All right. I'm going to get on my soapbox once again. I had eggnog at the Dirty Santa party. And, you know, that eggnog has apparently went to my brain, as you can tell. <coughs> And me smoking a couple of Marlboros has caused me to cough a little bit more. Okay, guys, I don't smoke and drink. So if you're going to pop on my show and be like, hey, he said Marlboro. He said jackass. I said donkey for crying out loud, okay? He said eggnog. Well, for crying out loud, if you're going to have a lousy attitude, then don't watch the show, all right? All right. I'm here to have fun. I'm here for you, the fans. I'm here to make you laugh, make you smile, but give you sports news that is relevant. So, again, like I said, if you don't like this, too bad. There's a off button or a fast forward button. Find it. Okay, like I said, I'm going to rant again about something that I read the other day in the rantsports.com page. There's been rumors going around that the Rangers were talking to the Atlanta Braves about Evan Gaddis, about Justin Upton. Um, now there's talks that they're talking to the Colorado Rockies about uh, Wilson Rosario. Hopefully I'm pronouncing that right. Rosario who's a catcher. <coughs> Which will quite possibly be a pretty good deal. But, I'm going to disagree with this article. The article basically said that signing Justin Upton would be a huge mistake. Because the Rangers are going to be in last place anyway. All right, guys, I don't know who wrote that story at Rant Sports, but I really would like to find out. You know, I really would like to find out because you're a douchebag, all right? How can you say that the Texas Rangers are going to be in last place buying stuff that was said at winter meetings? They're gauging the market for crying out loud. They're gauging the market. They're looking at pieces that will better the Texas Rangers for next year. Justin Upton was a name that was brought up. John Daniels has publicly stated that more than likely they're not going to do one-year projects. They want guys that have more than one year that they're going to get some use out of. I can understand. I can totally understand J.D. on that. I don't always agree with J.D., but I can understand him on that point. Now, for whoever this dingling 
who wrote this article is, well, you know, it would be a huge mistake because they're going to be in last place anyway, and he's going to move on and not resign with the Texas Rangers. Okay, I can agree with that one last statement. He probably will not resign with the Texas Rangers. I will disagree with two statements. The Texas Rangers will not be in last place. All right? You can only assume that they're going to be in last place because of what they did last week in the winter meetings. What did they do last week in the winter meetings? What do we know that they did? They traded for Ross Detweiler of the Washington Nationals. Only gave up two minor league prospects and lower tier minor league prospects at that. Okay? They're looking at signing a former Cub as well. Fuki Yucha, uh, I, hold on, I'm a, I gotta look this up before I botch his name. Fujikawa. Fujikawa, they're looking at signing Fujikawa to a one-year deal with incentive laden. And, you know, these people at Rand Sports are probably going by what the Rangers did at the winter meetings. A lot of people wanted to give the Rangers a bad grade because of what they did. Well, they needed to go in, get this, this, and this. All they did was trade for Ross De uh, Detweiler. Not a very good deal. They're going to sign Fujikawa. Not a good deal. You know, he's had problems. Detweiler's had problems. Um, you know, other names being brought up. Brandon Morrow's had problems. You know, is there a surprise signing in the in the mix? Uh, James Shields? No, he's not going to sign with Texas. So they're going to be in last place. You're assuming that by what they did in the winter meetings, that they're going to be in last place. That's ludicrous. That's ludicrous. You cannot dictate what a team does in the winter meetings as them going to win the World Series or them being a last place team. Because I'm pretty sure that same writer at Rand Sports right now is going to be the douchebag that says the Boston Red Sox are going to win the World Series. The Detroit Tigers are going to win. They traded for uh, uh, Jonas Cespedes. Oh, no, Boston's going to win the World Series because they traded for Wayne Miley. They traded, they signed Justin Masterson. They, uh, they traded for Rick Porcello. They did this, they did that. The Cubs might even win because, you know, they traded for uh, Miguel Montero. They signed John Lester. You know, they got Andrew Freeman. Now they've got a manager in Joe Madden that's going to push the envelope, make things happen, and possibly get a World Series through the Cubs organization this year. Well, guess what? The truth of the matter is championships are not bought or grown on trees. All right? That's never happened in the history of Major League Baseball. And it won't happen today. It won't happen tomorrow. It won't happen next year. It never will. Look at the New York Yankees. Classic example. The last 10 years, they have overspent on a plethora of players. They've overspent on a plethora of players just to see themselves short in at least half of those seasons and not making the playoffs. Right? Am I right or am I right? I think I'm right. Ho, ho, ho. Right? Ho, ho, ho. You know, so if you're going to write articles, let's write articles from a non-biased standard. All right? Maybe he was writing from a non-biased. Maybe he's saying, you know, yeah, I'm a Ranger fan, but... You know, this Justin Upton deal is going to be bad because it's going to put them in last place. I can agree with the fact that you said that he probably would not sign after a year. I will agree with that. He probably wouldn't resign with Texas after a year. More than likely, Texas probably wouldn't have the money to buy, uh, pay him over uh, the next year. What do you think
should be the grades of your favorite teams in the winter meetings? Pretty simple question. You know, I know, I know most of y'all have your favorite teams out there. What's your grade? Let, let's personally grade our, you know, our organization. You know, a lot of people feel like Oakland is in a rebuilding mode because they got rid of three of their top players that got them to the playoffs last year. You've got to understand the 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 format that Billy Bean has worked with over the years. Any of y'all ever seen the movie Moneyball? That Moneyball movie was a movie about Oakland Athletics general manager Billy Bean. Pretty smart guy. He's a very analytical, statistical guy type guy. He goes, looks at the statistics, the analytics, has those guys look at it, bring it to him. If things don't mesh up, your hiney's out the door. If you don't mesh with the team, your hiney's out the door. You watch that movie, he traded Giambi like that. And a lot of people were like, why? He's the best player out there. So what? His ego, his ego stepped in his way. His ego stepped in the way, therefore, causing him to trade him. Probably one of the best movie baseball movies of all time. You know, I, I've got plenty of baseball. But, you know, any sports movie is 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 uh is my favorite. To be quite honest with you, I'm a I'm a huge baseball fan as it is. So you know, Bull Durham was a great movie. Hit uh, Field of Dreams was a great movie. Um, Forty Two, the story about Jackie Robinson to me was a great movie. I didn't realize that's what went on during, uh, well, I uh, to say that's not right. I knew that went on back in those days. Don't get me wrong. But what I didn't realize was the amount of stress, the amount of, of hurt that was put on Jackie Robinson just for him to break the barriers of somebody in Major League Baseball to get into that sport as he was. And all thanks to a guy by the name of Branch Rickey, who was a Caucasian man, owner of the, uh, the, the team back then, who wanted Jackie Robinson. And he was going to do anything in his right mind to get Jackie Robinson on his club that story to me is amazing. Some people will be like, well, you know, you're white. Why do you like that movie? Well, who cares what color I am? Some of my best friends are purple, okay? All right. At least tonight they are. All right. For crying out loud, lay off the eggnog. Oh. So much went on this past week in the winter meetings. I probably could not go through it all. So, one last story for tonight. Well, I'll do two. I'll do three because I know you Astro fans out there want to hear the last two. I'm going to rant again. And I know you love it when I rant. All right. Kobe Bryant. Called out his team yet again, the Los Angeles Lakers, for being, quote, soft. Yells at his general manager for giving him lacking teammates. He basically called his teammates soft like Charmin toilet paper. This is where I'm going to put on my ugly hat and go into a rant yet again. Kobe, I seriously wish you would pipe down. Honestly, I would have traded you by now because if anyone is soft like Charmin, it's the overpaid, big britches, whiny baby, Kobe Bryant. You heard it right. 
the overpaid, big britches, whiny baby, Kobe Bryant. But guess what? Don't expect him to be traded because the Buzz family loves him too much. Look at the interview. Jeannie Buss had an interview a few days ago about inheriting the team and how much she loves Kobe Bryant and how much she loves Kobe Bryant. Why don't you just put it in your pants? Why don't you? I mean, you've jumped in bed with Phil Jackson. You might as well just add one more and have a threesome with Kobe Bryant. You know, I'm sick and tired of Kobe Bryant bullcrapping about, oh, everyone else is soft but me. I'm the leading scorer. Wham, wham, wham. Kobe Bryant again, and I will say this one last time, and then I will get off my soapbox, is an overpaid, big britches, whiny baby. So shut up. Shut up. With that being said, I'm going to end on a happy note, Astro fans. I know you want to hear Astro news. And two big signings happened in the Astro world. The Astros last year had a horrific bullpen. Uh, a bullpen that they knew needed work. So they went out and got a couple of pieces to help them out during the winter meetings. They signed... Lou Gregerson to a three-year, $18.5 million deal, which is a pretty good deal. Former A, somebody that's going to come in and going to help their bullpen, along with Pat, Pat Neshek, Nes, Nes, who's got a, another deal from the Houston Astros, former Cardinal. Those two guys, just adding those two pieces in their bullpen, in my opinion, have given the Astros a second-place finish next year. A second-place finish. And that's before even the season starts, okay? I won't get into that until probably February or March when I start doing my L Wells and, 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 and uh, grading the teams by them. So those are two great signings by the Houston Astros. The Astros doing a great job in the winter meetings with the help of, yet again, former Texas Ranger, President and CEO, Nolan Ryan. We all know he was there. He was helping you out. And so, therefore, we're going to trade places. Texas will be last. Houston will be in first, and they'll probably win a World Series before us. Oh, well, at least the Texas team will win a World Series, right? Somebody's got to win because nobody in Texas is going to win a Super Bowl. The Cowboys aren't. The Cowboys are playing well. Don't get me wrong. The Cowboys are playing well. But the problem is if they don't win tomorrow night against Philadelphia, season's over with. They're done. Stick a fork in them, they're done. So, with that being said, that's this week's show. Again, that was two weeks. I don't like doing two weeks in between shows because then the shows run 40 minutes to an hour long. My throat gets sore. I act like a weirdo that's been whacked out on some whacked out eggnog from a dirty Santa party. You know, I'm coughing like I've been smoking Marlboros. You know, making you laugh, making you smile. Making you enjoy something that you love. Thanks for joining us. I am your host, Jimmy the K Scores. I am your host, Jimmy the K. This is the Jimmy the K Sports Show. Remember, each and every Saturday, we'll be back. There's three easy ways that you can get in touch with us. Three easy ways you can get in touch with us. You know what those easy ways are? You know what those easy ways are? Too bad, I'm not going to tell you. Because the three easy ways to get in touch with us. 
free easy ways to get in touch with us. You know what those easy ways are? Facebook. Go to our Facebook page. All about Sports Zone. Email us all about sports zone at gmail.com. Like us on Twitter at Jimmy Kersey One. Until next Saturday, 8 p.m. Central Daylight Time. Stay out of the danger zone because it's a bad place to be in. But keep up with your sports news and the sports page, all about sports zone on Facebook. Until next week, 8 p.m. Central Daylight Time. I'm your host, Jimmy McKay. Peace out.